happen. And it's really just someone <laughs> taking advantage of Black people, even though they weren't American, they were t- still Black people taking care of Black people who did not have the know-how or resources to know better um, and just taking advantage of them. Uh, so it's a really tragic story, especially since one of them is no longer here. And like uh, the 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 people that was actually singing, they wasn't. Did they really get anything? <laughs> that part. Oh, like oh, that's the other part of it. Is that black <laughs> dude who was rapping, who's like from Houston or whatever, right? And he <laughs> apparently tried to like he he was paid. Let's write this down, right? He was paid for his work. Right. It's not like they stiffed him. He was paid for his work. But once Millie Vanilli started getting platinum albums, that's when he was like, well, that's supposed to be me. I'm going to say something about it and (laughs) said something. And but it was like broadcast overseas. Nobody knew who the hell he was. It was this black man from Houston. Yeah. Just, what yeah. you doing over here, nigga? Like, yeah, okay. Yeah, of course. You're the rapper behind Millie Vanilli. Okay, got whatever. So nobody freaking believed him. And then even now that it's all come out, I don't think he's doing any better than he was before. Yeah, yeah he driving like, buses or something. Man, What's interesting is what the quiet. producer dude, uh, Farane, what was his name? Was the guy named Farane, the producer? Uh, uh, what was his name? Yeah, Could something like that. Up. I'll look it yeah. up. Um, yeah, the the producer, um, he was also in charge of other Black acts. Um, we have posted it in the group before. We we, we laugh about it. Um, but what is it? Um, was Boney. it Boney, Boney M. And uh, they have that song, Rasputin. And the joke is, like, you'll always see the video, and it's the three women and a guy. And they're like, when, you know, when your dad tells you, you can jo- start a group, but you got to bring your little brother with you, and he's dancing around. So that's the group. It's they're called Boney M. And kind of find out their producer that was over Millie Manilli also was in charge of that was over them first. Um, and they didn't sing either. Well, I don't I need to actually like dig into that. I, I keep saying I'm gonna look that up because it's like they kept on saying the guy, Boney M, didn't sing. He was a dancer. But mm-hmm. I always thought the women sang anyway. I didn't think of him as the singer. Like I don't know enough about the group, or maybe I haven't listened to watch the whole video to know that he wasn't a singer. I don't know. But um, j- again, but just that idea that, that that's a German group. Who knew that they were German? That's a German group. And they got Millie Vanilli, one's French, one is German. So they're over there and getting got by these these white folks. Like, I mean, yeah, I know over there they just look at it all as everybody's German. Yeah, it's some black Germans and some white Germans, and the white Germans is <laughs> getting over. Yeah. It's LaBouche is the other group. Yeah, yeah. that's what you said. Yeah, LaBouche. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which I didn't even know the lead singer that she died, man, in 2001 in a plane crash. Damn. Well, it's interesting what that is. is like you said earlier, Stacey, that they could, well, at least at least we know for sure that um, Fab could actually sing. Yeah. Fabian Fab can sing, sing. Like, he sounds like these songs. Now, yeah. it could be him mimicking it so long that he does sound like it. Or could he really sing? That's what, I, I don't know where is where. You know what I mean? Like, Somebody could sing Michael Jackson for a long time and imitate him, and maybe he can yeah. imitate the song but can't because sing. he's heard it so much and performed it so much. But, that's the only thing I wonder with that. That's- but even said, so, when you lip sync, do you actually sing though? You're so used to just lip syncing. Are you actually making words? Which come supposedly, out of your mouth? when you're lip syncing, you're supposed to actually sing it so it looks real. I get that. That makes sense. Yeah. That, that definitely makes sense. But I feel like I think I think the reason that they gave of, oh, you have such strong accents and that's going to be a problem. And we do know that if you don't have an American accent and you're singing you know, American songs, it doesn't always show up, but sometimes in certain words. So like with Adele or Corinne Bailey Ray, when they say certain things like I hear can't instead of can't. Right. Like, you know, so but yeah. even with that, though, I think we knew they're not American, so we wouldn't have tripped off of it. Now, maybe with the rapping, it may have been a little something, but hell, yeah. sleep right? it's fucking British. So, like, it's just, it was an excuse that was just wasn't needed. Or as much as we've done, I mean, yes, auto tune is more prevalent now, but for them, they could have absolutely created songs where they didn't have to sing as much. Maybe, you know, maybe they just don't do ballads, you just do pop songs. Right, yeah. mm-hmm. like guess what you do. I mean, th- there's no way that Millie Vanilli were thought of as the only group that couldn't sing out there. There are plenty of other groups who 
were at least able to get a hit record and you know you just kind of played around <clears throat> what the sound was so again it, it's something that didn't have to happen it did happen Millie Vanilli ruled the world for a bit won a Grammy um and then had to give it back it's Spank Farian is the producer dude just yes, for the, just people keep they yeah what's what's messed up was when he died though and that when he went to the funeral and they said that they took off everything that everyone else had flowers and stuff and then put all his stuff up front and then yeah. he shows up outside the funeral like he'd been there the whole time <laughs> uh doing interviews <laughs> <laughs> yeah he is the equivalent of red in the five heartbeats big big red <laughs> big red coming up in the five heartbeats coming up in the funeral I was like, no, sorry. I'm so sorry. Man, I missed him. I didn't even know he was hooked on drugs. <laughs> like, Negro, you part of the reason. Like, that's exactly it. So they were, um, yeah, they, they they were everywhere, and then they became. And they, what's crazy is they kept on showing Arsenio um, making fun. Arsenio used to go hard on them. And Mar and Arsenio they was going hard before. They yes. found before they found yes. out immediately. Like Arsenio was like, mm -mm, no nope. man in living color. <laughs> no, nope, no, nope. Arsenio was like, nah, this ain't. Hey, they right. just, next thing I said, that's like he was on him. They was he was on them for like months before, day, like, like day one. Arsenio was like, mm -mm, like nope, <laughs> nope, this ain't it. So yeah, yeah, in, in living color, like they were the joke. They like. They said they were already like they were already getting made fun of, but once that came out, it was. I mean, this was like a, a huge controversy. Mm -hmm. I remember like when they did a performance at the Grammys and they showed everybody like De La Soul and everybody was looking at them like this is some bullshit. Like, and they, they lost. Like, and then when, when you look at the category that they won and the people they were up against, like they lost to Soul. Soul, to soul. Like, soul, to soul lost to them. And we all know that was the song. Like and you and, still hear it. You still hear that song. <laughs> To this they day. redid it for a uh, belly this is what I'm saying. <laughs> and, and slowed it down and remixed it great so like there were so many other options that year they could have won and the fact that they got it and then no one has that so it's not like they won they they had to give it back and now someone else has that grammy that's it like no oh, one nobody has won <laughs> no one won that year is what this is what the history books? Oh, saying. that's I, I was wondering that I was I I, didn't, I, didn't, I forgot to research that. So they never didn't give it to like somebody else. Like no, hey, there George. is no first place, second place. Either yeah. you won or you didn't. So there is no runner up where the next somebody else gets to have it. No. So uh, what was it? 1990, 90. something 90. like that. Yeah. So whoever like that award just it's nowhere. They probably did, just, did they go on Earth in your hall? I don't think they ever went on. I, I doubt I it. Have, who would book that? Like even even <laughs> if the booker calls. So even when the booker reaches out to the publicist to set it mm -hmm. all up, no publicist worth their salt would accept that invitation to go on Arsenio Hall. Well, the one dude put them in the Grammys. Their other manager put them in the Grammys, and there nobody wanted it to happen. <laughs> Well, that because he's because he allegedly didn't know. He's like, "What's the big deal? Like, why'd you send us up for a Grammy?" But what I've learned is this: Don't you want to win a trophy? Right? Don't you don't want no trophy? As much as well, y'all know that everything in the dark comes to light, right? But what's definitely going to make it happen is when an award is involved. You can bullshit the public for as long as you want to, but once an award is involved and you are given something for that work. The truth will come out. That story mm -hmm. I told y'all about with the Washington Post and the white and the black lady of uh, Janet. Uh, I figure, forget her last name right now. Who wrote that 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 false story and had the whole nation, including the president, in the uproar? And mm -hmm. like the welfare queen thing or something like that. She had followed some woman. No, no, no. She no. It wasn't the welfare queen queen thing. That's a. But that that's we'll talk. That's a whole other thing. It's a welfare queen story. But um, this was she had found a. Um, Basically, the heroin um, heroin was becoming big in the 80s, and she was a reporter, yada, yada, yada. She did this story about an eight-year-old addicted to heroin. Just huge oh, story. yes. Okay. I remember yeah, it. Huge, yeah. huge story, whatever, right? She, Washington Post. Washington Post is coming off of not only the Pentagon Papers, but also uh, Watergate. So they have this amazing track record, and she lies. And the reason they found out was because she won a fucking Pulitzer. That's how they figured it out, was that she won the Pulitzer. And that's when 
um, little small details, but even just about her, wasn't even nobody trying to catch her up. But that's how they started finding out things. Like well, then wait, people was like, "Hey, can we go find this kid and help him? Like, where do we right, find like, him to be able to go help?" Him? Or the uh, one of the schools that she said that she went to. Um, newspaper, you know, posts and everything. She won the Pulitzer. She's a graduate of Vassar. Vassar's like, oh, snap, one of our people has, let's put this in the alumni letter. What year does she graduate? So again, not trying to be messy. We're we're trying right. to- She put it on. She, we right. put it on for our own. Right. And wait a minute. She didn't graduate from Vassar. Hmm. Hold on, hold on, hold on. She had lied even about her credentials? Yeah. Yeah, she yeah. went all the way with it. Yeah, she had lied about credentials, everything. So, like, I mean, it's deep. But, like I said, point is, is that you can bullshit your way into a job. You can bullshit your way to all kinds of shit. But once you start getting recognition and people start rewarding you something, now there's a problem, right? It's not, not saying that it wasn't a problem when you lied. But at this point, you've made a fool out of us. Mm-hmm. Like, that's all it is, is that you made a fool out of us because we believed you and believed in you and what you were giving us. We loved it, paid, spent money on it. And now come to find out it was all fake. So I think if nothing, it is the lie, but it's also people just feel you just feel disrespected and betrayed. Mm-hmm. Like, damn, it ain't no Santa Claus. <laughs> that part. <laughs> Yeah, but that's, so that's exactly Janet it. Cook. I'm, I just Googled it real quick. So it's Janet yeah. Cook is the one. That's her last name. Yeah, Janet Cook. I can think of her last name. But real, like it's and anybody if you ever if you're interested, look up Janet Cook in the Washington Post, and it is a crazy story about what she did. Um, and then just how like after that happened, she had to give the Pulitzer back. She of course lost her job at the, at the Washington Post and has never been a writer again. She's like. In her 60s now, something like that. Um, and yeah, so I'm looking here. It says she married a diplomat and moved to Paris at 85, lived there for the next decade. Then she got uh got divorced, and then she's just been kind of bopping around a little bit. Yeah, she sold hey, the film you- right for 1.6 million in 96. Still waiting on that movie. Like it's like I said, it's just it's an interesting little tidbit. But yeah, once the but, other guys, Jason Blair, the other guy I was thinking about with the uh welfare mom was Jason Blair. If y'all I don't know if y'all remember that when we first got to college, he was a black dude that uh worked at uh I think I believe at the New York Times that wrote an article about this welfare clean he was following around and stuff, and they found out that he didn't even graduate from Northwestern, all kind of stuff like yeah. that. Period. Yeah, yeah, like, said, like he that. went there for like two years, but he never graduated. Yeah. Like that's the worst thing you can do, I think, is make a fool of the American <coughs> or just in general. Like I said, you put out something like there was the guy. Uh, oh, what's the book? A Million Little Pieces. I'm going to say what it is. Um, so A Million Little Pieces. Uh, a guy wrote this uh, this book, but New York Times bestselling. Oprah fucking loves the book. Oprah's like, Wait, did I lose some light? I did. Um, yeah. So Oprah's like, hey, you got to. Um, come on my show, talk about the book. It's about him in recovery with drug addiction and everything and kind of find out it was all lies. And what you do not do is lie to Oprah. You also do not go on her <laughs> show and know. lie to Oprah. Oprah almost shut down the whole beef industry. You think she won't fuck you up over a book? <laughs> like, nigga, I'm trying, to put some, I'm trying to put you on. Nigga, I'm trying to put you on and this is what you do to me? You gonna lie? I ain't even try to get 10%, my normal 10%. I'm trying to, even try to get 10%. I'm trying to put you on. But yeah, once again, once awards and recognition come into play. Uh, that's so that's the same. You, you do this scam because you want to be famous, right? You want to get that recognition. But once it starts happening, then that's when people start finding out your secrets. Like it's these are movies, like there are movies that are like this. Where it's like all of a sudden, like uh, and now he's on top of the world, but there's somebody who knows who he really is. He knows his <laughs> like uh, the, I don't know if you've seen that down. that Wright movie that's coming out, where like he uh he's been writing books and then he writes like a ghetto book, and then everybody starts loving it, but they don't know who he really is, and he just keeps on like he starts writing them more and more. It's it's, it's a brand new movie. It's going to come out with Jeffrey Wright, so you know it's going to be flop. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I seen that. Yeah, and so he basically yeah. does like some. Uh, uh, what's the dude that makes all the little hood uh books now? Like, you know, he'd be like, So, what they want me to see? He said in the trailer, he's like, What they want me to call it? He's like, Bitch, put yourself in place. And he was like, Yeah, we want you to talk like that <laughs> for the book. 
You mean, and so he wrote a book just like his publisher wanted him to do. Just be what's, uh, what's the name? Quan Mills. Quan Mills. That's it. He wrote a Quan Mills book, and it blew up, and like everyone started loving him, and then he kept writing them. And then someone is like in the trailer, one of his friends is like, dude, ain't even you. He's like, what is me? And like, so it gives you a whole <laughs> thing of like, like, can you, like you said, Stacey, you get caught up in it and you live in the lie. Now mm -hmm. you, you literally <clears throat> live in the lie. So now you got to, you got to live the lie correctly. You got to believe the lie and live it. Like you, this is yeah. me now. I, mm -hmm. I did go Northwestern. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know everything about the school now. I'm new. I went there. Yes, I know Professor Green. Yeah. <laughs> it may not remember Name me. one of the buildings. I, I just sit right in the corner, in the third seat from the corner. You remember? And then somebody that been there so long, I'm like, yeah, I remember you being there. Sure Joe was. Used to wear that green jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I used to wear that now, green you know, jacket. black folks' memory is ridiculous. <laughs> we, are, we will, because we don't want you to know that we don't remember you. Yeah. You're like, man. Yeah. Especially when you're dealing with your grandma. You know, uh, uh, Pastor uh, Green? No, I don't. Yes, you do. Remember, uh, he taught you how to tie a tie. No, I don't remember who, who taught me how to tie a tie. It was it was Reverend Simmons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Granny. You, you know what, Granny? You got it. You right. You don't remember her? She used she used to babysit you when you was a baby. Okay. Uh, when I was a baby. Uh, yeah, I remember now. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. my memory from one. Yeah. Like, you probably ain't seen her since you was a baby, but I'm sure I'm 40. I'm 42. Yeah. 42 <laughs> years. So you're telling me probably 41 and a half years ago, I saw this person. And I they, didn't know. They, probably, they a good 70. Look, I didn't know who you was at that time. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know you for real. Like whoever was giving me milk, that's where I was trying to hang out. So I yeah. whoever was feeding and changing me. <laughs> right. That's that's who I'm kicking it with today. All right. Andre 3000 drops a non-verbal vocal album, a flute album. Um, Stacy, you have listened to this <clears throat> album. I have not. I just haven't been in a zone. I heard that I need to be get a bath. And I don't think I have I only have one tub in here, and it's in my daughter's room. So I don't have like a tub to get into at all. Like I only got showers in one tub and she won't let me. Hey, this cool ass Scott from the I Love 90s Music Podcast. Hit that subscribe button right now. Like it on the SOLC Network. You finna get all the real deal on the 90s, the 2000s, and the splash of that 80s. Do it right now, man. And I'll be your friend.